dreamt to see in the wild west. Two dollars, two dollars to see Amanda McCullough, the Kansas City Thrush. There you go. Come on, you're holding up progress. Let's go. Two dollars. Plenty of room. Get on in there. Thank you. Arms will be stretched. That's me there on the left. And that's my sister Hannah. She wanted to be a singing star so bad she could taste it. And was always dragging me to hear some old dumb singer. Actually, this one ain't half bad. This could be sweet music out of fold. Friday here in a hook from the mountains. Let it sweep across the plains. Feel it moving in among you, heart to heart and hand to hand. Sweet, sweet music to soothe the savage land. Got too much, I want back east, back east. So I just stop and brought my songs, the words and melodies. Now I'm here to entertain, to make you feel real good. Way out here in the wild frontier. Sweet, sweet music, just so. Hey, what are you kids doing here? Pop it for singing lessons. If we get to Cripple Creek. We will. Papa's gonna find lots of silver. I just know it. And if not, maybe I can find someone here to teach me. Hannah Morgan, the Fort Riley Thrush. <laughs> More like Hannah Morgan, the Fort Riley Saint Chan. Lucas Morgan, you're always making fun of my dreams. Everybody knows dreams don't come true if you tell them all right, anyhow. Do too. They do not. Do too. No. Mom, let's go see what it is. No. We promised Aunt Betsy we'd be home straight after school and we're late already. Well, it weren't me who made us watch no Kansas City Thrush. <sighs> okay, two minutes. Five. Three, and you set the table. Okay, you deal.
it weren't as much fun as a shootout, but this guy was darn good. I didn't realize it at the time, but that gunslinger would end up being a very important part of my life. Oh, my gosh, Hannah. You wouldn't have believed it. I ain't never seen you shooting like that. No oh, big bother. Well, now the West was opening real fast. The gold and silver booms were way ahead of our government's ability to supply proper mining deeds. And Quint knew it. Things often had a way of slipping through the cracks. That left a lot of crumbs for scoundrels like him and Cyrus to pick up. Hello, Cyrus. You look like you need a little loving, darling. <laughs> now, Chloe, I already done said, me and Quinn are here strictly for business this time. Oh, I know, sugar. So am I. Maybe we could merge you or something, eh? That ain't what I meant, you know it. Supposed to be here. Well, you are. <laughs> you got it? Much obliged, little brother. You know, I'd get hung for this. Yeah, me too. Huh. Kind of fun, ain't it? <laughs> hey, this is the same movie agreed on. Well, just gonna say a little something on account. On account, you say one word where we got the skinny on them deeds. You swing first. Understand? Now get. Cyrus? Cyrus! What in the tarnation are you doing? I don't think he's coming, Quinn. He's coming. This may look stupid, but he ain't. Hell, he don't look stupid, Quinn. Matter of fact, he looks kind of like you. He's coming, Cyrus. Do you, do you think you can look any more obvious? Well, well. Here's the deeds. Dylan, guard him with your life. Now don't worry. But you won't find it. Bet. Right. That Colorado strike is so new, they ain't even have a land agent in it. They have to send the deeds back here to be recorded. Then the agent's got to turn right around, send them all the way back to Cripple Creek the same way. Correct. Only if someone who knew about it was to intercept them deeds beforehand, they'd find themselves the legal owners of some mighty rich holes in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> You should have been there, Aunt Betsy. She had about the most beautiful voice I'd ever heard. If I could sing like her, I swear I'd die and gone to heaven on the spot. God likes your voice just the way it is, Hannah. All the people at the church say so. I want it the same. I want to be on the stage. <laughs> Most likely when people hear you sing, they're gonna want you under one. You don't know beans about it. Oh, yeah? Well, I know that Mama wouldn't approve of all this nonsense about singing on stages and such anyhow. Luke, Morgan, I... I hate you! I swear, men ain't got the sense God gave mules. Oh, I see. I heard what you said. Now go apologize for it. Now get!
sorry. Luke. Did you ever think about her? Mama. A lot? Yeah. Me too. Today's mama's birthday. <laughs> I can't remember how old she would have been. I've been trying all day. I just can't remember. Think Papa's gonna send for us? Of course. How can you be so sure? Maybe he figures he's better off without us. Lucas Morgan, you know Papa said that once he got things together, he'd send for us. Yeah, I reckon. Anybody hungry around here? Uncle John! Did we get any mail? A letter from Papa? What do you say we uh, get washed up and go get some Aunt Betsy's cooking? Come on. Every day we asked if we got a letter from Papa. And every day we got the same answer. Well, don't you two look all down at the mouth? And get no mail from Papa again. John, stop teasing him like that. Give him the letter. Okay. Who's <laughs> it? John, found a little silver, but also discovered mine is not for me. So I bought the town emporium. An emporium? <laughs> Got it for a song, too, from what we can figure. Lucky thing, sounds like your daddy only had about a song and a half left. Bought the Emporium from a man heading west. He ran it into the ground, but it weren't the store's fault. Got just enough left for two tickets to Cripple Creek. <laughs> Reckon we won't be eating much for the next couple of months, but I can't bear any more without my kids. Thank Aunt Betsy for her kindness. I can't repay you for all you've done. Love, Jubal. Sure they're gonna be all right? Well, I have my doubts about mining, but when it comes to running a general store, I know me better than Jubal. We'll be fine. Good. I'm sure gonna miss him. Yeah, me too. We'll be needing the room soon. almost couldn't believe what was happening to us. My dream was coming true at last. Today, Hannah and me was really doing it. We was getting on a stagecoach and heading west to Colorado. I could hardly wait. Chris, you smell that? Flapjacks? Pretty close. Romance and adventure. Plain as a nose on your face. <laughs> Here you come. I could see it all now. Cowboys, engines, and Papa. Morning, ma'am. That's it? Yep. Morning, John. 
them. Here they are, half an hour early and no stopping them. Well, well, well. So you two pups want to go to Colorado, do you? Yes, sir. Just what makes you think you've got the mud for it, boy? Takes a man with a lot of courage to brave the silver fields. A woman, too. Freeze in the winter, roast in the summer. Springtime, the bug's gonna eat you alive. Indian summers can drive a man mad. They'll kill you for your silver. Shoot you for your boots. You so much as look cross-eyed at a man. You get yourself hanged. And that goes... I know, and so can a woman. <laughs> <laughs> By golly, you two are all right. John, they got more backbone than a ten-foot rattler. They can sure go with me. These kind of pups are just what the West needs now. Get your hug in over. We got a roll here. All right, I'll set. Thank you. Go get it. You're right, you hear? Promise. Thanks for taking us in, Aunt Patsy. I love you. Let's go, ma'am. We've got to move. Watch your step. Hey, boy. Want to ride up there with me? Sure. Get up there. Oh, Chris. John. Bye, Aunt Betsy. Thanks for everything, Aunt Betsy. Take care, Uncle John. Lucas Morgie, take care of your sister. Yes, sir. I love you guys. Miss you. Okay, boy, say ha. Ha? Ha! 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 <laughs> Little did we know, we weren't the only ones eager to see that stage pull out of town. Kind of close, aren't you, man? They weren't intentional, believe me. It's gonna be just fine. Climb on in, man. Neither Hannah or me like saying goodbye to Uncle John and Aunt Betsy. They've been real good to us. And it weren't going to be the same without him. But we were on our way, and I never thought I'd be so happy as to watching them Kansas City wheat fields disappear behind us. I told Cole, our driver, I wanted to know the second we crossed into Colorado. And furthermore, one of our passengers was that fancy gunslinger. I was dying to talk to him about everything. Only. He didn't strike me as being a real talkative type. Hannah was sure glad to see Mandy climb aboard at the last minute, too. I know she'd be bending her ear for hours about singing and such. <laughs> Girls. I don't think you look a mess at all. 
I was robbed. Robbed? Wow. Who did it? My so-called uh, business manager. I've been at the sheriff's all morning, but ain't much to be done unless they catch him, so. Lucky I sleep a little something in my pillow, or I'd be making beds at the hotel right now. Gosh. Maybe I should have stayed. You know, did more concerts. Put myself up into the nest egg. I think you're beautiful. Pun? I think you're beautiful. Well, <laughs> thank you. What's your name? Hannah. Hannah Morgan. That was my brother Luke that hung his head in a moment ago. We're on our way to Cripple Creek to be with our papa. Well, thank you, Hannah. planned on spending the night at a way station and heading into the mountains the following morning. I couldn't see him yet, but up ahead were the Rockies and Colorado. The gunslinger didn't wake up the whole time. If it weren't for the snoring, I'd have thought he was dead. It's the code of the West you never mess with another man's guns. But I just had to see him for myself. my guns, kid. I killed a man once for that. Then I shot his dog. It's a girl! Is he okay? Yeah, I think so. Don't meet up here. Flap and listen. That's right. I remember now. <laughs> Wait, that was you. Yeah. It sure is pretty. Your voice. It's just about the sweetest sound I ever heard. Aren't you the nicest thing? Thank you, darling. I'm going to be a singer someday. Of course you are, darling. For true. Well, I think that's real nice, Hannah. 
Surely I do. <laughs> Singing's a wonderful thing for a woman. I guess that's why God gave us such pretty voices. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of bait are you using anyway? I mean, I... Little did we know, we was being follered the whole time. We could take him in that. We also get a keister full of buckshot for trying. We could be twice as careful once at camp. Besides, we're gonna have the station master for a guard. Ah, we'll wait till they're in the pass. You lock them up real good there. Of course, little did they know, someone was a baller in them, too. How long you reckon it's been since Indians attacked a stagecoach? Never. Not in these parts. <laughs> Boy, I sure gonna be surprised. You gotta make it look like someone was after something other than those registered deeds. At least till the dust settles. Did we get scouting, too? I just ask him. Come on, we gotta meet Lasseter. Kado, yeah, in the USA. So they are close. Kado, in the area. You just do nothing. Ni one gada. Tang, yah, tang, kah. The gada in the in the USA. Later on, Cole told me them Indians was probably with us the whole time. They can hide for days in your back pocket. But I sure never saw them. Smell better and paid hard cash for. <laughs> Cole's right. You keep the tar in my cooking, man. <laughs> it's nothing really. <laughs> hey, no. It's a gift. Like my voice? I'd love to be able to cook like that. You mean you can't? Lucas, just because she's a girl, where in the books does it say she's got to know how to cook? That is not what I meant. What I meant was that she should. I guess it's because Daddy got rich owning all those coal mines back in Virginia. He'd always say, if God had wanted you in the kitchen, Amanda May, we wouldn't have had the good fortune to afford to cook. You're complaining? It would just be nice to be able to cook for myself every once in a while. Why'd you do it? Leave home, I mean. No, well, it's my, it's my Daddy's fault, really. He always said I should follow my dream. Though I do suspect he figured I'd look a mite closer to home. <laughs> I don't know if Mama's speaking to him yet. <laughs> <laughs> I could teach you how to cook, Miss McCullough. Oh, Hannah, I, I, I could tickle pink about that. <laughs> My sister, she made them. She made some stew also. If you 
mind, I could go get you some. Got my own food. Maybe just the biscuits then. The gunslinger sure was a hard lady to get to know. But at least she ate the biscuits. And she didn't shoot me. Ain't much of a bird, does it? <laughs> They're coming. How far? Two hours. Around noon, I reckon. For you, that could mean two hours or two weeks. I don't see why we need him along nohow. He's the only one who knows how to for sure make it look like engines attack that stage. Well, hell, Quinn, I, I could. I know, I know, I know. But he ain't gonna have no problem hurting. Especially with them youngins aboard. Come on, I'm caught to keeping him waiting once they come.
Well, the horses won't go down this. We're gonna have to find another way down. Move out. Out, boy. Was that accounted for? Yeah, we're all here. Oh. God's gone. Still carrying iron? I got him. Oh. Oh, Lord. You're bleeding pretty bad. Well, Daddy always said if you're going to do something, do it good. I guess I did. Well, your daddy be proud of you today. I don't expect we can move you till we deal with that era. But be quick about it. It won't take him savages long to get down here. Let's go. Do something. Okay, I'm gonna get you from behind, all right? And I'm gonna pull it through. Boy, can you help me with this? All right. Okay. Hold him tight. Hold him down. Here we go. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> I got it. Boy, take this bag, get me on my feet. Let's go. Get under his arm. Oh. Missy. I get it. Get me up. Get out of here. It's all right. I got you. Help us, help us here. Put me down. No, no, go. We gotta keep going. I said, put me down. Uh, put me down. Now listen to me. You're not gonna get very far carrying my three hides. You hang on to that pouch, boy. It's got government things in there. I ain't never let him down yet. We can't just leave you here, Mr. McKay. You ain't got no choice. Now listen to me. Chris used to be a guide with the Buffalo Soldiers. If he's still alive, you'll find us. What if he isn't? Don't worry about me. Stay as close to the trail as you can. When Denver finds out we're not coming, they'll send a search party for us. But what if they don't? It ain't much, but keep you going till help arrives. Thanks. Don't worry about me, boy. I'm gonna be all right. I don't know. I just think that we should stick together. No, no, no. I'll only slow you down. This ain't Fort Riley. Besides, what makes you think I feel like sharing? Mr. McKay? I found this by the wreckage. I don't know if it's any good or not. This bit is a fiddle, Miss Hannah. It's fine. 
They're a couple hundred yards upstream. They ain't found the coach yet, but it won't take long. All right, you better get moving. Boy, you gotta act like a man now. I want you to take care of these women for me. You hear me? Yes, sir. Get going. Bye, Cole. Take care. Come on. Get her, boy. I don't need any water. Go. Iron. You don't hit what you aim at. Whatever sets you on this course must have really been something. Yeah, it was. You take care now, you hear? Watch your top knot. Go. Look at here. They've gone back the way they came. Mountains must make them nervous, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the horses. Come on! They're going upstream! Don't break out the whiskey yet. It ain't gonna take them two shakes to figure out what we done. But you done good, boy. You bought us some breathing room. You do feel good. Come on. Now, Cole told me later he wasn't worried about dying for a moment with Chris around. Chris. Oh, man. Tells it different. Looks like you didn't go on the dunny, Cole McKay. Lost a lot of blood in the bargain. I can't move you, can I? I can't take you with me, neither. Looks like we best say a prayer for the women folk and the kids. I reckon. They damn sure gonna need it. What? Kids fool us. You hate bugs. <laughs> well, that's pretty darn funny because they seem to like you pretty good. I'm hungry. Well, why don't we just light us up a big old bonfire and cook us a side of beef then? I didn't mean to. Look, for all I know, your papa could be Kit Carlson. But most of us, we from the city. And this ain't like a stroll after church for any of us now, is it? All right. Sorry I bit your head off. I'd just like to get as much distance as we can between us and them murdering thieves before dark. Clara was right. 
it didn't take them varmints two shakes to figure out what was what and where we was heading. If only we'd known about Lassiter being so deadly and all, and a bloodhound to boot. They was breathing down our necks, and the only thing we was worried about was our bellies. left you in charge anyways. I'm tired, and I don't want to go another step. Fine with me. Come on. Oh, big bother! Move. Now! Look! You don't threaten my sister. I don't care if you are an adult and you got a gun. You ain't hit anything with it yet anyhow. Now listen. No! Them no! Aliens. You listen! Now, we are tired, and we're hungry. And we ain't seen hide nor hair of the trail for two hours. We ain't going one step further till we see what's what. Do you understand me? I say... I keep say... moving. Well, I don't care what you say. You want my opinion? I don't think you ever killed a man or his dog. I think that you just plug whiskey bottles and talk big. Maybe so, boy. But I know more about survival than you all. And I'm just trying to protect you. Are you proud of yourself, Lucas Morgan? Picking on Claire when she's just trying to help us? Look, I was trying to protect us. You okay? men are all alike. with y'all. I'll attach. Do you hear me? Attach! Hold her there, you little vermin! <laughs> Hold it, I said, boy!
As far as I'm going today, them kids want to stay lost another day. My pleasure. I say we keep looking. Cyrus is right. We ain't found him yet. We ain't gonna find him in the next ten minutes. Appreciate the meal anyway, sir. It's been a long spell since breakfast. And why is that? It's because we were on the stage to Denver. Engines attacked us. Is that so? Mr. McKay, our driver was wounded. We had to leave him in a cave. He told us to head west along the river until the rescue party found us. What rescue party? The one they'll send from Denver when they find out we're missing. That's why we've been following the river. <laughs> Is that so? Yes, sir. Y'all went over a spiny hill back here about ten miles, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it looked like the river was fixing to double back on itself. Why? Uh, I made the same mistake once myself, so. Mistake? Then you call that stretch of the river. Snake, brother. Cause it's got a forked tongue. <laughs> you mean to tell me that we've been following the wrong river? <laughs> For about half a day. <laughs> no wonder we couldn't find the road. Look, Mr. Hawkins. Could you help us? Hold it right there, Missy. I for little women things on me. Could you lead us back to the trail? I can't and I won't. Why? You got fiddles and a place to sleep. But Mr. Missy, I can hear a gnat belch in the windstorm. Think we no Indians sneaking up on you tonight. You be thankful and don't try my patience because you might not wake up in the morning. It's okay. <laughs> That's much better. <laughs> Stand just far enough ahead of us. Like they know what they're doing. And we don't. <laughs> <laughs> be real proud of you. Think Papa heard about the stage yet? How? We're not due back for a day or so. Oh, yeah. You, uh... Think we're gonna die? Didn't you promise Mr. McKay you'd take care of us? Yeah. Seems to me I should be asking you that question. Well, thanks anyhow. You're welcome.
you looking at, miss? Tilton. Clara Tilton. Looking at the stars. Back in Texas, I used to walk out every night and look at them. They're so quiet and peaceful. They ain't never been touched by anything sad. Why'd you leave, Clara? I had two boys. Babies, really. There was an outbreak of cholera and Henry, that was my husband. He was a proud man and his religion didn't hold the doctors. Half the county before they put it down. Well, you were lucky. When my babies died, I just uh, strapped these on and rode away. Guess I figured I'd be Calamity Jane or something. I swore I'd never care for someone so much. It could hurt me like that again. But if you don't care for anyone, Clara, then it all hurts. Damnation, are they? All right. Man, I'll worry it. Last read the best oh, wow. there is. Huh? Oh, wow. Hey? Oh, yeah. You see? You see? You see? Hmm. See? Hides around you think you'd at least share. Shh. The years he's liable to put fire out, too. I ain't slept in 18 years, girl. I hear everything.
with that Indian hoo-ha no more. Yeah, well, I... I said, don't bother. My plan was to leave one alive, to report back that it was injured, but they done made me mad. It ain't gonna happen no more. I'm gonna leave their bodies for the wolves. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> now get up. Oh, for you. Find the proper way now, girl. I expect after burying two boys and a man, I can safely be called woman. Yo, coot. Well, no disrespect, man. None taken. All right, so we head toward that cut till we find a break in the trees. Then we slide down and we'll be back on the right road. You ought to be there by early afternoon. Less than you'll fall off some going mountain. <laughs> 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 Stay on the high ground. Let you know who's a coming, friend or foe. We thank you kindly, Mr. Hawkins. Mm. Mm. And just so you know, them Indians around these parts, them's pretty peaceful. These surely weren't. Just so you know. Mm. What? I'd like to thank you. No, sir. Well. Well, company now, then. Never bother nobody. I reckon we better get off before them engines find us. Well, how about we have lunch now? That way we can push straight on through till nightfall. Good idea. Let's head back up under that ledge. That way we can still see the road, but I don't think anybody will be able to see us up there. Okay. shouldn't be too hard. Look, be careful, you hear? Clara? Thank you, honey.
we got to chase a squirrel or something and lost track of time. Is that you, Luke? <laughs> Don't shoot her, you jackass! Not till we get that satchel! She's getting away! Whoa! Go get her then! Okay. Stop it, they'll hear you. You have too many guns. Some of your friends might get hurt. Get away from me! Uh, what, you find it? No! Now, where is the satchel? Who are you? Well, yesterday we was Indians. Do you think maybe we can have this little tea party some other time? Where is the satchel? We ain't got any satchel! Maybe the boy's got it. Where is the boy? Leave the girl alone! All right, you just keep them pretty little lips buttoned, and we'll get the boy. And after we find that kid, and we kill him, and we get us a satchel, we'll have a little fun. <laughs> There'll be time later. I wanted to try and take them no goods right then and there. But Skyano, chief of the Cherokee, said, as long as Quint and the boys was looking for me, the girls was safe. And he was right. As we rode along, he told me a bit about his people. The road to our new home was hard and littered with the bodies of my people. Many of us died, including my family. The Trail of Tears. We learned about it in school, back in Fort Riley. I was an infant. Missionaries found us on the side of the road. I was still clinging to my mother's robes. They buried my family and took me to raise. You were lucky. <laughs> yeah. If the great white fathers in Washington had not decreed we could no longer live on our land, I would never have lost my family or met the Reverend and Mrs. Hollis spoke. Gosh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean That's okay, that. boy. I know what you meant. Staley, Adig, Siana, Lagos, Osta, Nanige. Osta. Get stay, stay, stay. Your sister and her friends are safe. Rest here and wait for the others. So how did you end up here? Well, my adopted mother and father cared for me a great deal. Treated me as one of their own. And many people feared for our children and their children to go to school. To them, Education was like a magic one should not own unless one was white. Then one night when I was a growing man, I had a vision. It said I should return to my people, to the old ways. It hurt to say goodbye, but it hurt more to stay. And did you find them? No. I found Fast Crow instead. Fast Crow? The only child or chief of all the Cherokees. In the white man's world, it was like uh, marrying the boss's daughter. <laughs> Is that fast, girl? No. That's a Dandewisk. The one who cures. She's a medicine woman. Spirits gave her her power, and she brings us good fortune. And she's as good as any three men in a battle. Hmm? Um, are you going to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Si Diggy Osis. Kaile. <laughs> now, what makes you think that, boy? Uh, well, I never met any engines for, except the ones bushwhacked us back on the ridge, so I just figured that was you. <laughs> Those were Apple Indians, boy. Apple Indians? Yep. Red on the outside and white on the inside. Ask in a gask, Wala Jilehi. Then a gay did you ask Reoya? Unioya. Negesan Gese. Those men you saw take your sister in the forest, those were your Indians. But why dress up like them? Well, perhaps if the army were only looking for Indians that attacked the stage. They might not consider something else that might still be missing. Those men are still looking for something they cannot find. That's why they still pursue you. Skyanode had it figured out for a while. But it wasn't till he said it, I even remembered I still had the satchel. I wanted to ask him why he was doing all this for us, but I guess I already knew. Because that's what a man does, no matter what color he is. Quint and them didn't know it, but Skyanod led him just where he wanted. He'd been planning this attack from the moment the girls got nabbed. I asked him how he knew he was right, and he just smiled and said it was a gift. Like Hannah's cooking. Pretty good fire. You all right, boy? So, do we get to wear war paint, too? A war paint? Uh, <clears throat> no. You see, it's our custom to appear fierce and brave against other warriors, not those cowards. So, tell me what I should do. Do? Nothing. You'll come with us and watch. Look, that is my sister out there, okay? I'm not just gonna stand around and watch while you do the fighting. Oh, -oh. this one would fight for the honor of his sister. Tree climber, prepare him. Tree climber will help you. If you're gonna fight with us, you must be one of us. Don't worry, it's nothing. Speak English too? Sure. I learned it from my father. Come on, let's go. A spunky little cuss.
I'll shoot her! No. Smart. Real smart. Well, look at it this way. At least you got the half-breed to torture. Can't say as it hasn't been fun, boys. <laughs> to her right then and there. See? Told you. Clara could do more than just talk big and shoot whiskey bottles. father yes I do owe you a debt sir your son told us what all happened the Kyotep Cherokee do not make war on children it's bad enough when you have to go into battle with them The driver's partner brought him in all shot up. They told us about the ambush. Given time, they reckon it wasn't engines at all. It took me all 30 minutes to put together a posse. Once folks heard it was women and children that been attacked. The marshal, he's still trying to put together the why to the how, though. Well, maybe this will put some light on things. Not only you're a great warrior, Scano. Now you're a hero. Yeah, well, just make sure your people in Washington know that. These guys made you look bad. Yes, I know. How would you like it if they disguised themselves as marshals? There's much to tell. Oh, my father. Papa? This here is Amanda McCullough, the world famous singer. <laughs> Mr. Morgan. Nice to make your acquaintance, ma'am. I hope these two didn't give you too much grief. Oh, I don't know what we would have done without Luke, sir. And Hannah? She's just about the best friend a girl could have. Excuse me, folks. Name's Grant. Denver U.S. Marshal. Do you think you might be able to answer a few questions, uh, miss? McCullough. McCullough. Amanda McCullough, yes. No, I don't mind a bit. Okay. Well, it, it all started in Fort Riley, mm -hmm. and I... Father? See here? It's Clara Tilton. Uh, she's just about the best shot in the whole West. That's so, Miss Tilton. It's Mrs. Oh. She's a widder. Luke? Well, she is. That's so. Uh, we're going to say goodbye to someone, Papa, and we'll be right back. My children told me you saved their lives. That's a debt I can hardly repay. Well, they were both ways, sir. Luke did his share of saving. They're good kids. Yeah, but I know it. But they are a handful. And you said you were on your way to San Francisco, ma'am, when these men attacked you. That's right, Marshal. Did you know that they have palaces there? I can hold a hundred people at a time just to hear somebody sing. No, ma'am. Believe me, if you spent a lot of time in tent shows, you'd realize what heaven a theater is. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know about that, ma'am. I, I save all my singing for church. And I haven't met anyone they were telling you. 
Jubal. Pardon? Oh, it'd be nice if you, you call me Jubal, ma'am. Well, in that case, you best call me Claire. All right, Claire. What are you doing in these parts? Well, I bought a general store from a man headed east about a month ago. A guy, they ran it in the ground, but it weren't the store's fault. Bought and paid for. Well, this is Cripple Creek Emporium. That's my store. What are you talking about? Well, I bought the same store last week. Last week? Well, I bought it last month. And I got the paper to prove it. It's my store. Oh, that coyote must have sold it twice. Well, that point is, I bought it first. Well, I got my whole life in that store. Well, so do I. You know, we just built ourselves an auditorium here in Denver, man. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. It'd be a real pleasure to hear you singing that. Mayor's wife's even talking about opera, for God's sakes. You really think they'd let me sing there? Surely, ma'am. Well, maybe I could stick around a little bit. <laughs> Who knows? If I like Denver and vice versa, I might even consider teaching a few lucky young girls. That would be real nice, ma'am. Well, <laughs> it looks like I got a partner, ma'am. Looks like. It was getting dark before I had a moment to Duduka. say goodbye to Duduka. Skyano. You know he say. Mm. What do you say? That you're too big for your britches. Oh, yeah? No, no. You see, you're a man who walks in a boy's body. They wish me to tell you they want to call you Usti Ulok, Littlefoot. They wish to honor you, Luke. They think you're very brave for one who's so young. Oh. So, do you think you'll ever come back? What, to the white man's village? No. Why not? Too many white men live there. <laughs> no. My place is here, boy. I must teach them what I learned. What's that? That it's not guns that will defeat us, like it did the buffalo, but the lack of the white man's kind of knowledge. It's something my people must learn together. Perhaps. What? Perhaps there is someone that'll benefit from looking at the world through the white man's eyes. Tree climber? Yeah, sure, anytime. I, I, I can ask my father and he can stay with us. No, no, not today, though. There's much to be done before the upcoming winter. Perhaps I will come to your village after all and speak to your father. So, boy, look after your sister always, and mind your father. And always remember, first there's your family, and then there's all else. Did someone very wise once say that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, that's how it happened. Like I told Hannah. Take care, little foot. Dreams don't come true you if you tell them outright. You lost. But I finally got mine. And then some. It's a good thing, too. Because I got lots more dreams.
Oh. 